temperature. It's definitely, definitely dropping. Right, Violet? probably should have let that thing run in but I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys and introduce you to some of the newest newest members for our flock with egg prices going up the way that they are going up and looking at some of our our laying hens I had to make the decision about going ahead and planning on adding just a few new hens to our flock I am planning on setting up an entire incubator full of, of eggs so that we can go ahead and plan on hatching out um, as many eggs as possible to build our flock back up. But what I had to do before was get a couple of uh, hens that are of age or should be laying or just started laying so that when it comes time to start collecting eggs uh, for our incubator, I will have a little bit more than what I would normally have with some of our freeloading slackers that we have now. Hopefully our rooster will be able to keep up with the seven new ladies so that we can have some fertile eggs in the next month or so. That's when I plan on getting our incubator all set up and, and ready so that we can start hatching out some new babies. I got these seven hens from a local person and they're really, really beautiful. I had them in quarantine for a little while just to make sure that everybody was good to go. But the quality of these hens and how they looked, I was, I was actually pretty impressed with, but they're sweet as can be. <laughs> hey girl. It's still warm. <laughs> We're at that time of year where I have to actually start collecting eggs uh, at least two times a day. The temperatures are definitely getting colder and if you don't want frozen eggs, you do need to plan on going out and checking them a couple of times a day. I still have the rest of the animals to, to go out and feed, but it looks like my battery's getting ready to die on the camera, which I have my charger up in the apothecary. So I'm gonna swing by there, grab that, and I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start up a good, a good tea, because it's gonna take a couple of minutes for it to cook down. I think you're gonna like it. Come on, let's go. Poor thing, thought we were going for a run.
let that simmer for a little bit and go finish taking care of some of our, our farm animals. By the time I get back up, it's going to be close to being as done, but not, not all the way. We're gonna talk about chaga. It's kind of interesting and one of my favorite teas. Let's go take care of my babies. Hey, Violet. Are you being a good girl? You know, there's a lot of people that watch me because they love you. Tell them how good you are. You're such a good girl. Let's go take care of them animals, huh? always has to race everything, especially the pigs. That's probably one of my favorite things to uh, to watch is, is when we go to feed the animals. The pigs want to race with me, they want to race with Violet, and uh, she doesn't like to, to lose, so. <laughs> I noticed that big old Berkshire, she hit that hot wire and it didn't do anything. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe we've got something going on with the line. I'll have to check it out and see. We've had a little bit of wind lately. And so I am wondering if we don't have a tree branch on the line. I'll probably have to, I'll probably have to plan on walking that Come here, sweet face. Come here. I'm gonna get my cup because it is technically not done done, but it is done done enough for me. Um, plus I'm freezing. I'm just gonna snatch a little bit. That works. Instead of me having to strain it all the way out. I might add a little bit more water since I'm going to continue to let it simmer. There, I think that'll, that'll warm me up. Oh no. <laughs> ah, okay. This, nope. Nope. How do you cross thread a mason jar? Okay. Not, not happening. But I just want a little bit of honey. I have a whole five gallon bucket. I could tap into, oh, there we go. That'll work. This is so good. Let's do this properly. Good enough. Good enough. So this jar of what looks like wood chunks, it's actually it's actually a fungus. This is called chaga or anotus oblicus, which I'll probably butcher that, but you know, y'all know, I do my best. This is actually known as a, a fungal sclerotium, and it's actually a mass of highly concentrated mycelium. They commonly grow on hardwoods um, like oak or, or beech trees. I've only seen a handful actually in person but I've never actually harvested chaga. That is the goal. One day I will be harvesting chaga. This right here, I ethically sourced from an individual who wildcrafted this, and I was able to purchase it and bring it here back to our apothecary. I, I use chaga a few different ways. One is as a tea form, and you can get it in chunks. You can get it in a powdered form. Uh, I also put chaga in my coffee every morning. I do chaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, turkey tail. I feel like I'm missing one. But I mix all of that into my coffee every single morning and it gives me such an energy boost and I absolutely love it. But for chaga as an individual tea, it's so good. I mean, it's kind of rich in a way like coffee, but not. I have in reference 
um, Christopher Hobbs mushroom book. I met Christopher Hobbs uh, at the uh, American Herbalist Guild and I was really excited to, to buy one of his last books that he had and he even signed it. So I'll put this book in my Amazon storefront if anyone is interested to learn more about medicinal mushrooms. He talks a lot about all different types of mushrooms and how to properly prepare them. Chaga is actually considered an adaptogen, which I've shared a lot about adaptogens if you guys have kind of followed. I feel like adaptogens are the ones that I think we really, everybody in this world probably needs to be focusing on. It helps your body's ability to handle all the stresses, whether it's environmental stress, whether it's internal stress, whether it's you just cleaning your entire house and then your family walks in with muddy boots from being outside on the farm. That happens a lot. And for me, adaptogens are my way of just maintaining. You know, it's like instead of this, 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 I'm kind of like, all right, we're good. We're just cruising. Uh, doesn't make me tired, gives me some energy, but not like caffeine. I feel like I tend to be in a lot better of a mood when I, when I have adaptogens in me on a normal basis. So that's a little nugget that I think you guys should put in your, in your back pocket and do some research about adaptogens as well as, as chaga. Now chaga is also very well known for its ability to fight uh, cancer cells. But I wanted to find the right words to be able to explain why it actually is deemed as, a, as an anti-tumor. Now in short, uh, this is again Christopher Hobbs' book, Chaga is known to contain over 200 different bioactive molecules and one of them is betalinic acid, which is the inside of the, the sclerota. See the, that yellow uh, appearance? It's like a yellow-orange color. This is actually known to have anti-tumor properties, antiviral properties, as well as uh, anti-parasitic properties. And I thought that this was actually really interesting too on how it works in your system. How, how is it anti-cancer? You can say it's anti-cancer, but how does it, how does it work? So Christopher Hobbs shares that the anti-cancer property is consistent with its ability to induce apoptotic cell death in cancer cells through the mitochondrial pathways in the cancer cells. The betalinic acid has a potent cell toxicity against the variety of cancer cells, but not, not normal cells, which I think is kind of cool. So the normal cells and tissues have a resistance to the betalinic acid. So only the cancer cells have that, which is how it goes in there and just basically is able to to get rid of it. And because of this, I think that it's getting recognized more and more for its anti-cancer properties. So I thought that that was really cool. It's also an immunomodulator. It has antioxidant properties. So it's just gonna support your immune system and just give you that boost. So I took about five chunks of chaga and I put it in about a one liter pot. It's been simmering for about an hour. Now you can let it simmer longer. One to eight hours I think is about the span. You don't want to cook it down because you do want the properties in it. The longer that you let it simmer, the darker that the chaga is going to be. And if you have it in this form where it's chunks like that, you can take the chaga chunks put it in a Ziploc bag, and then what you're gonna do is you can put a little piece of tape on it or a little note on it, a sticker, and note how many times that you actually brewed the tea with the chunks that you were using. You can use the same chunks. I've seen people use it up to five times, but everything that I've read is three. You can use the chunks for about three times. Just store it in the freezer so nothing funky grows on it. I'm gonna go get another cup of tea and then figure out what I'm making for dinner. Thank you guys for watching and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.